My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here once again with yet another collection. And we're actually going to kick things off today with some coffee lake. Now, of course, we learned some time ago that the new coffee lake processors would not be backwards compatible with either the Z270 or Z170 platforms. And this, if you wanted to upgrade to coffee lake, this obviously would force you to go to the new Z370 platform despite the fact that the coffee lake processors drop into the pretty much identical LGA1551 socket found on the previous gen motherboards and we've now had some interesting comments made in an interview which was conducted by BitTech and they spoke to Andrew Wu product manager for ROG at ASUS and they asked me a few things, and of course I will include a link to their interview in the description below this video. But there's a couple of key comments from him that I want to focus on. And basically BitTech asked them, quote, Can you go into more technical detail about why the new CPUs are not backwards compatible with Z270 motherboards? And well, his response was very interesting. He says, quote, actually it depends on Intel's decision. And then BitTech further followed up with, so it's not a physical limitation. Intel said it has to do with power delivery. Not really, he replied. The power delivery makes a little bit of difference, but not much. And then Asus, a couple of questions later, oh, sorry, BitTech rather, followed up with, so if you wanted and Intel let you, could you make the Z270 compatible? And here is the most interesting part. He says, quote, yes, but you also require an upgrade from Management Engine and a BIOS update. Intel has somehow locked the compatibility. Now, there is much more to the interview that isn't really relevant to this topic, so I'm not going to mention it. But again, the full interview is linked in the description below. I do suggest you give it a read. There is a lot of interesting stuff in there. Just I wanted to focus on these two key comments because a lot of people speculated that this was a rather arbitrary move from Intel, basically forcing you to shell out, you know, what is probably going to be a couple of hundred pounds for a really good motherboard or even like around a hundred for a still good but not top of the line motherboard just because lol's we want money, essentially. Obviously, this is pretty much a complete juxtapose in comparison to what AMD are doing AM4 and how they've sworn that they're going to be sticking with it for quite some time. And obviously, I discussed yesterday how they're even going to be doing a huge BIOS update to make sure that their new Pinnacle Ridge, which is the new line of Zen, is going to be compatible with AM4, basically meaning you don't have to upgrade your motherboard. And just, you know... Andrew obviously isn't saying, yep, Intel arbitrarily decided, but his comments make me think that's what they've done, because I can't really see any reason why this is the case. And if he's saying that we can make it work, then they could probably make it work, because, again, he works for Asus, ROG, all that. I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. So this kind of confirms, at least in my mind, that it is a arbitrary restriction from Intel but you know take a take from it what you will perhaps you want to call me cynical and disagree again let me know your thoughts and comments in, in the uh, in the comments below <laughs> poor way to wear that but you get what I mean but um let's not focus too much on this this is kind of a confirmation of something we kind of already suspected to be honest but uh still nice to get confirmation doesn't really change the reality of the situation unfortunately but uh there you go so let's move on, shall we, to the 1070 tie, shall we? And we have some pictures of that particular card thanks to video cards. And this is a Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 tie gaming. And for those of you who have uh, got good memories, you're probably looking at this going, hmm, this looks really familiar. And it's because it has the same shroud as the 1070 G1 gaming, but does show a few changes in comparison to the original 1070 including a shorter PCB and new heatsink and also we can see the fact that it still has a single 8 pin, 5 display outputs, you know, DVI, DisplayPort and HDMI as well as of course the 3 fan dual slot coolers. There's even fan stop so as with pretty much most top, you know, good graphics cars it'll only spin up the fans unless it reaches a certain temperature which is good for keeping the noise levels down. 
So not really, you know, oh my god, stop the presses kind of news, but still nice to see what the 1070 Ti is actually going to look like. However, let's move swiftly on to our next topic of discussion, which is actually regarding The Evil Within 2. Now, of course, we've had two rather high-profile releases this week, that being, of course, Evil Within 2 and Middle-Earth Shadow of War. Now, Shadow of War has not really set the charts alight, at least here in the UK, but again, I'm here to focus on The Evil Within, and things were a little bit dire for The Evil Within 2, which has only sold a quarter of the original game's debut week sales, which is uh, not brilliant. Now, th before we, you know, press the panic button saying, oh my god, this game's dead, there is something to consider. The game did come out on a Friday, leaving it with only a single day in the UK charts, and obviously this does not include digital sales, which is very, very important, especially on PC gaming, less so in console gaming for various reasons, but... Even in console gaming digital, it's becoming more and more of a thing because, well, you don't have to get out, leave the house or even change out your PJs to download a game on PSN or whatever. However, it's still concerning that we're seeing a reduction of 75% in sales. However, before we get the doom and gloom bells out, let's just wait and see till how it does next week. Again, it only had a single day in the chart, so perhaps that's what's mainly contributing to this. But obviously... The Evil Within 2 is rather different in comparison to the original, and obviously the original did have issues. So perhaps people just weren't interested this time around, or it's just because there's so many games coming out this month. It's crazy. Again, Shadow of War came out, and obviously later on this month we have Wolfenstein 2 and Assassin's Creed. So it could just be the case of people are saving their money because, well, they can only buy maybe one or two games this month, and they've got to pick and choose and maybe hope for their final one in their Christmas stocking or whatever. So, you know, let's wait and see, but it's definitely concerning, to say the least. Now, our final topic is something I've left deliberately for last, because it's probably going to take the longest, <laughs> to be quite frank, and this is probably going to have its own separate video as, like, a bigger discussion, because, you know, this topic is very much in the headlines right now. But as a purely news focus, we have a response from the UK government surrounding loot boxes. Now, obviously... This has been very, very much in the public consciousness, at least for gaming recently, because of the whole Star Wars Battlefront 2 thing, and of course Shadow of War. And we have a response from them, and it's predictably non-committal, to be honest. I'm not really surprised, but as with all governments, things move slowly. I wasn't exactly expecting them to slap a, you know, a sticker over it and call it good. But we have a... Response. And before I get into their response, let's go with what they were actually addressed with, as Daniel Zeichner, who is Labour MP for Cambridge, submitted two written questions, and they addressed the Secretary of State. So let's, let's discuss what they were asked before we go into their response, seems only fair. And they said, to quote, to ask the Secretary of State for digital culture, media and sport, what steps she plans to, help, to take to help protect vulnerable adults and children from illegal gambling, in-game gambling, and loot boxes within computer games to ask the Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport what assessment the government has made of the effectiveness of the Isle of Man's enhanced protections against illegal and in-game gambling and loot boxes and what discussions she has had with cabinet colleagues on adopting such protections in the UK. So, there you have it, that's what they were addressed with and the response actually comes from Tracy Crouch, the Parliament sorry, Parliamentary Undersecretary for the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport. And, well, both questions received the exact same answer, which kind of tells you a little bit about what you need to know here. But they said, quote, The Gambling Commission released a position paper in March 2017 detailing existing protections in place for in-game gambling, virtual currencies and loot boxes. They said, quote, Where items obtained in a computer game can be traded or exchanged outside the game platform, they acquire a monetary value where facilities for gambling with such items are offered to consumers located in Britain. A gambling commission license is required. If no license is held, the commission uses a wide range of regulatory powers to take action. Protecting children and vulnerable people from being harmed or exploited by gambling is one of the core objectives of the regulation of gambling in Great Britain and a priority for the government. The Gambling Commission have a range of regulatory powers to take action where illegal gambling is taking place. Earlier this year, the Gambling Commission successfully prosecuted the operators of a website providing illegal gambling facilities for in-game items which was accessible to children. The first regulator in the world to bring such an action. The government recognises the risks that come from increasing convergence between gambling and computer games. 
the Gambling Commission is keeping this matter under review and will continue rather to monitor developments in the market. So, yeah, not that brilliant a response in all honesty because, well, it's evasive, vague and also ill-informed because, well, while they did indeed crack down on a third-party gambling website, that wasn't really what was being asked. We were being asked about in-game gambling and loot boxes. But it has been at least passed on to the Gambling Commission. Now, the re- petition that you've seen floating around regarding gambling laws and the hope that they can be updated to include video games with gambling mechanics hasn't received a government response. And now it has received an amount of signatures required to get a response, but again, the government moves slowly, so not really surprised there. Hopefully we'll get a response soon because at the moment the petition has quite a lot of signatures. 12,922 to be exact. I will include a link to that petition in the description below. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't signed it, um, please do so. Because, you know, with this becoming more and more prevalent in video games, I feel like it does need to be addressed um, in some manner. Even if it's just like a warning or something. It's like this needs to be officially recognised as gambling because, well, it is. So, um, an unsurprisingly ill-informed and vague response from the government there. But still... It is response, it's being looked at, it's under review, quote-unquote, by the Gambling Commission. And, of course, we had that petition still in the works as well. So, fingers crossed we'll see some movement soon. I don't want them cracking down too hard on it, but, you know, we need to basically make developers think twice about doing some really skeevy stuff like we have seen in Battlefront 2. And go watch my videos, yes, videos, plural, on that subject, if perhaps you're wondering why I think it's skeevy. I've discussed that at length. So, go and watch those, because I don't want to repeat myself here. Thank you very much for watching though guys, I'll see you next time.